Hello, Tollfoot Alliance Church family, and welcome to another update. This Sunday marks the fifth week when we've had to adapt to the reality of schools being closed and gatherings being restricted. So I'm glad to hear that people are, for the most part, doing well. As the weeks continue, we'll continue to find ways to expand our connection options to help fulfill the needs that were addressed through some of the programs of our church. I want you to be aware of two events coming up. One is this coming week, and it's a coffee time for seniors. Online, of course, you have to provide your own coffee and snacks, and that's going to be at Tuesday on 2.30 p.m. We'll provide you the links for that via an email. During that time, mostly a social time, but I'll also provide a few updates from the Board of Elders. Related to that, we're also going to give some phone numbers. If there are people that aren't able to join by a Zoom video conference, they can phone in and join in that way. Second event is a concert of prayer that's going to be held by Zoom on Sunday, April 26th at 4 p.m. We plan for that to be about an hour long, and it's time when we're going to uphold our families, our community, our international workers, our world in prayer. And again, the invitation for that will be sent out in the coming week. Parents, we want your feedback on what you're using for children's resources during this time. Are you using the lessons provided by our children's ministry leaders or some of the online options or both? If families continue to want those lessons, uh, our children's leaders will continue to provide those. Uh, but if you're using other online options, that's okay too. Just want to let you know. So as I check in, I will ask about that and then we can uh, modify or adjust accordingly. So. A few um, administrative and financial notes we want you to be aware of. First, Food Bank. Our church very generously has given $2,300 in the past month for the Food Bank. So we thank you. It's when it's an unusual time when we couldn't collect in a usual way during Sundays. So thank you for giving in that way. A little bit about our church finances, the general fund. It's too early to tell to the, the degree to which the financial impact of this is going to be felt by church families. Uh, giving to our general fund and to Global Advance is a bit behind the same period last year, but we don't at this point have immediate concerns. We often experience fluctuation during the year, and we are operating with expenses lower than budgeted. We have reserves that we can be accessed should there be longer-term implications, but the elders will be providing a more detailed financial picture in the coming weeks. But we do want to thank each one for your ongoing financial support for a local church and for our missions through the Global Advance Fund. Thank you for your donations which allow the church to be the, the church and help us to connect people with one another and most of all connect people with Jesus. I noticed a number of you have accessed the e-transfer option. Thank you so much for doing that. And we to can continue to encourage e-transfer option or mailing the best way. And we will provide some limited opportunities during the week should you need the building for to drop off donations or to use the um, Interact machine. That will be Wednesdays and Thursday afternoons at 2.30. About our Sunday services, our worship leaders have met online, of course. We decided that we're going to continue with our format of recorded uh, features, welcomes, updates, and sermons from the pastor, and then worship playlists and maybe some greetings from the worship leaders. Um, though we could pursue a streaming option in the future, we do not want to do so when the current instruction from the provincial and medical authorities is to limit the amount that people go out. So even with physical distancing and precautions to wipe down services, we don't want to ask our musicians to go out more than necessary or to take additional risks. When the instructions change, we'll re revisit the option of streaming or other options. But we are so glad that so many are accessing the Sunday messages and playlists. Some of you have passed on the links to family and friends, and I know that, uh, that the playlists have become part of my regular Sunday routine. Continue to pray for one another and check in with one another. As well, pray for the safety, the vulnerable of a front line, on frontline workers. Pray for leaders as they make decisions during this pandemic. And I'll be continuing to connect with people both individually and in groups. By now, you've probably taken some steps to limit your consumption of news headlines. News outlets are far more proficient and prolific in highlighting the negative than shining the light on the positive. We know that the reach of this pandemic will be significant, but as people of faith, we have the perspective of a God who through the ages has shepherded people through the worst of times. We don't want to ignore the difficult realities. We live with a hope of a God who will bring us to better days. I was encouraged this week with some scriptures in Isaiah. Isaiah 64 verse 4 
Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. I think this might have been a verse that was echoed by Paul when he wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Thanks for joining. Praying for you all.